So I want to just touch upon a little bit of, give a little bit of context for the Lewis Center. Um, this is by no means a comprehensive history of the arts at Princeton, but it will sort of tell you what, how things have evolved. Um, so, you know, creative and performing arts at Princeton are relatively late comers to the curriculum. Um, prior to the early 1900s, the arts were largely student driven. And this include a variety of student groups, including Triangle Club, um, which I think is the oldest uh, touring American university arts producing entity in the, in the country. Um, and um, they've presented original student written musical comedy since the late 19th century, when they began collaborating with the Glee Club, the orchestra and the banjo and mandolin club. You can see a couple pictures at the top. The top left is is a triangle production, and you'll, there's a picture there of the Glee Club. The triangle show has had a long tradition of male actors playing female roles, as you know, back in the day, women were not allowed to be on stage. Um, and then on the bottom left, there is the first female student who was ever in a triangle show. This was in the 1968-69 season. And, and her name was Sue Jean Lee, class of 70. Um, and this is the production called A Different Kick, <laughs> which is re referring to the tradition of the all-male kick line, which dates back to 1907. And the male kick line is still a signature uh, and appears in every triangle show to this day. So if you go to a triangle show, you'll see, you'll still see an all-male kick line. <laughs> um, some of Triangle's famous alums include F. Scott Fitzgerald, Brooks Bowman, Jimmy Stewart, who you can see in the picture there, um, Jose Ferrer, Wayne Rogers, David E. Kelly, Zachary Pincus Roth, and Brooke Shields. Um, so it was 1939 uh, when a faculty committee proposed a creative arts program and when the university arts curricula were launched. Uh, and then dance officially came to Princeton in 1969 when the university uh, opened its gates to undergraduate women for the first time. <laughs> dance was one of those quote unquote special needs anticipated by the admittance of women uh, along with shorter beds, kitchen facilities and secure locks on dormitory doors. <laughs> Um, and this is a picture of Zeva Cohn, who ran the dance program from uh, up until 2008. She, she was there from 1969 to 2008. Um, and as it turns out, dance courses were as extremely popular with men as well as women. So even though they were sort of thought of as something for the women, the men were totally down. Um, by the 70s, the original creative arts program had evolved into three separate programs creative writing, theater and dance, and visual arts. And all of these programs were housed at 185 Nassau Street, which I'm sure some of you have been in at one time or another. So now fast forward <laughs> to 2006, and this is former president Shirley Tillman. Um, and she presented a report to the board of trustees in 2006 proposing this sweeping initiative for Princeton to expand its arts programming um, in the, both creative and performing arts and establish itself as a global leader in the quality of its arts offerings to undergraduates. Um, and following this January 20th, 2006 meeting, uh, Tillman announced that Peter B. Lewis, class of 1955, had uh, Con was contributing $101 million to support this initiative. And that's how the Lewis Center for the Arts was born. And, the, and just to make sure everyone is clear, the Lewis Center for the Arts is actually an academic unit of the university. Some people think the buildings are, that you see, the beautiful buildings down by the Wawa are the Lewis Center, but the Lewis Center for the Arts is actually an academic unit. Um, um, and much of what was outlined in Tillman's original report has been achieved, and that included expanding all of the arts programs with si expanding the size, the resources, the visibility um, of the certificate programs in creative writing, musical performance, theater and dance, and visual arts. Um, fellowships were to have been established, 
And then of course the creation of additional physical space was a big part of this plan. And that's when, um, and then in 2013 was when ground was broken for the arts and transit neighborhood, which included the state of the art $30 million Lewis Arts Complex. Uh, so the arts now, you know, part of, Sh of Shirley Tillman's vision was the arts would be from edge to edge of campus and we truly are now. So um, we are, the Lewis Center Academic Unit occupies now three spaces on campus. We're still at 185 Nassau. The program in visual arts has taken over the entire building now. Uh, and um, uh, so you can, um, let me see, you can move on, Marion. Yeah. So 185 Nassau uh, and then New South is where um, the program in creative writing lives. The, the entire sixth floor of New South is, is the program in creative writing. They've been there for a number of years. And then, of course, the new Lewis Arts Complex, which we share with the Department of Music. So the Lewis Center for the Arts is, uh, is, shares these three new buildings with the Department of Music and our programs in dance, theater, music theater, the Princeton Atelier, and administrative offices are now located here at the Lewis Arts Complex. So there's three buildings um, in this complex. Um, which you know are this is um, these are this is academic space. This is really space dedicated to student work and student research and student learning. Um, the Arts Tower is um, where you'll find Marion and I. Um, <laughs> Marion, you can go to the next slide. You can get a peek of my office. That's where you'll find me. I'm on the fourth floor, um, and, and uh, Marion has a very similar office. Um, the Arts Tower also includes one of the th one of three new dance studios. Um, this is Ellie Studio, um, and then there's also in the Arts Tower is a new gallery. Uh, so the the space is the one uh, space that is actually controlled by the program in visual arts. Uh, outside of 185, they do um, program this space as well. Um, the, the second building, uh, Wallace Dance Building in theater uh, in, includes four new acting studios, uh, two additional dance studios, um, and also a state-of-the-art black box theater and dance theater. And Marion, you can just kind of slowly scroll through and you can take a look. This is one of the acting studios. This is the design, a design studio named after the late Tim Basson. Um, this is the largest of our new dance studios. And this is the Hearst, the dance theater. What a gift to have a theater just specifically for dance. Um, and then this is the black box theater. Um, and then the final building, of course, is the Efron Music Building, which is uh, the uh, run by and occupied by the Department of Music. And so the Department of Music string programs are now in this building, as well as the program in jazz, the Princeton Laptop Orchestra, a bunch of beautiful new studio spaces. And this is the Lee rehearsal room, which is the, a room finally big enough to house the Princeton University Orchestra. Before this room existed, they had to re rehearse on the stage of Richardson Auditorium. So you can imagine that was not the best use of that space. <laughs> um, so now they have this amazing room. Uh, the forum is the space that where all three buildings um, are actually meet underground in this forum. It's a big open public space and it goes out there towards the Wawa. And um, also on this forum, le forum level is uh, you'll find a collab, which is a white box, sort of flexible white box space, which a lot of unique one-off projects happen in this space, performances, Ex exhibitions, other special projects um, for in this collab. Um, so um, I'm not going to go in more into into more details, but um, I, I don't know, Marion, are you able to drop this link into the chat? I wanted to share. Uh, there's an, a beautiful video that the architect Stephen Hall did about the architecture of the Lewis Arts Complex, and I'm going to have Marion put it in the chat. If any of you want to get more get a little more of an architectural tour because it truly is a work of art in itself, these buildings. 
Um, and um, he sort of gives a really beautiful overview of his thought behind the design of each of the spaces. Um, so I'll share that link with you. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Marion, who's going to give you a little bit more of a breakdown on our programs, what the Lewis Center for the Arts programs entail. Um, over to you, Marion. Yeah, I'm just going to drop this in the chat really fast. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, <clears throat> as Angel mentioned, the Lewis Center is uh, many art uh, minors. We call them certificates. Soon we're going to call them minors. For all intents and purposes, they are minors. Um, and we are the umbrella that houses the programs in creative writing, dance, uh, theater, music, theater, visual arts, and the interdisciplinary atelier. Um, and what's interesting is even though there is a huge amount of public programming that I'll also get to in a, in a little bit, you know, the Lewis Center, both as an academic unit and even its physical structure is kind of entirely geared towards the creative work um, of our students and, and the research work of our faculty, the creative work of our faculty. Um, so the building that was created, that you, somebody pointed out, it's sort of one of the most um, sort of state of, biggest state of the art and, and biggest buildings dedicated to the rehearsal and development of art, as opposed to actually just the performance and presentation of art, which is just something I think very unique about our facilities. Um, so the program on creative writing is led uh, by the extraordinary uh, MacArthur genius, all the other awards winning Ian Lee, who has a new book out, which I'm called Book of Goose, you should read it. Um, and uh, she's our program director and um, we have an extraordinary other faculty who lead classes in fiction, poetry, translation, um, and some nonfiction essay writing. Uh, and so others are Ilya Kaminsky just joined our ranks, um, po extraordinary poet. Patricia Smith will be joining us in the fall as a poet, Paul Muldoon um, in our fiction, Alexander Heyman, who also has a fantastic new book out. Um, A.M. Holmes. So we have a pretty amazing um, creative writing faculty. They lead um, small workshops. Most of our workshops for the students are no more than 10 students. Um, and again, in, in kind of introductory fiction and poetry, advanced fiction and poetry. And then the students in their senior year can apply to pursue um, an independent work where they're writing a novel, a book of poetry, a tr major translation work, and they're advised one-on-one -on -one by one of our faculty members. So the, it's a very rigorous program. And we usually have about um, 20 to 25 uh, students who get the certificate or the minor each year. And in addition, the program Creative Writing has a number of uh, public readings each year. The Althea Reading Series brings um, writers of all kinds to read together. And then also the C.K. Williams re Series is fun because the students read, the seniors read alongside uh, an established or emerging poet or, or fiction writer. So um, those are some public programs that we do. The program in dance uh, led right now by also the MacArthur, we have a lot of MacArthur winning people, it's wonderful. They're very genius. Um, Susan Marshall, who is a choreographer and um, extraordinaire. And so the program in dance has um, classes in a number of forms, particularly modern dance, ballet, hip hop are some of the more um, established forms in our program. Students can take introductory classes, students can take uh, more advanced classes, sort of more rigorous technique building classes. And then also there are some dance history, scholarship, criticism, theory classes that are offered. And so the students who get a certificate in dance um, typically take a kind of variety of those classes. And then they are do do um, some, their senior work is they're either choreographing a piece or um, performing in a piece that's choreographed by someone. Um, our, annually, the dance program offers the Fall Princeton Dance Festival, which is always an extraordinary event where there's usually about six major pieces by professional choreographers um, and, you know, 50 or 60 dancers um, combined in all of those pieces. So I highly recommend that as a um, public event. And in the spring, there's a series of independent work theses by students and one kind of group show that the seniors put together um, also. So a number of uh, opportunities there. And then finally, our program also has the Hearst Choreographer in Residence that um, comes and works with our students and then also themselves 
uh, bring their companies typically to do some work in our spaces, and they often also have a kind of public talk um, or showing related to that. Um, the program in music theater, I'm actually going to combine the music theater and theater conversation. I'll just go back and forth now. I won't do that. Um, so our programs in theater and music theater are run by Jane Cox, who's a lighting designer, and Stacey Wolf, who's a musical theater uh, historian. And um, uh, you know, offers class in a variety of both kind of practical um, acting, directing, lighting design, set design, all of the theater making courses, as well as some um, courses in history, scholarship, criticism around the history of theater and music theater. And then also a lot of um, community-based classes where students are engaging uh, perhaps in another form of, in some community-based, community-engaged theatrical work. Um, students in their senior year can, or in their junior year, can propose their senior project. Um, they can propose to perform in something, to direct something, to design something. Many, many students are choosing to write something. We have a very strong playwriting faculty. Um, and so in senior year, our entire senior, or sorry, our entire theater and music theater season is based on the proposals of students. So it's not it's not a faculty-driven season, it's really a student-driven season, which is um, pretty unique, actually, to our... Um, and something else unique about our theater and music theater programs is the last couple of years, they've introduced something called Try On Theater Days. So as part of an effort to be more accessible and inclusive, um, we've gone away from a typical auditions, and instead we have sort of days in which all students are invited to participate in a variety of theatrical activities and then from that, the shows of the season are cast as opposed to that kind of rigorous audition process. So that's been a real opener to a lot of students in our community who otherwise would not have necessarily put themselves forward. Um, the Princeton Atelier is a unique um, program. This was founded by Tony Morrison, who, as you know, is a major part of our creative writing program and Princeton as a whole and the world. Um, and uh, it is not a certificate bearing program. You don't minor at, in the Princeton Atelier, but it does offer courses that are very unique, that are typically bringing two or more artists together who themselves are working on um, their own projects. So they might be writing a musical together or creating a multimedia project. And they're bringing that activity into the classroom and the students are then involved in either the, they're both involved in that kind of development of that artwork and simultaneously maybe making their own mini version of that. So for instance, we've done a uh, an atelier where two artists were working on creating a musical and the students were actually doing the research that went into the writing of that musical. We're doing environmental research, historical research, and then there was a final presentation in which some of the students were actually, you know, involved um, performing in um, the atelier. So that is the atelier program run by um, Paul Muldoon. Our fellows program. So one of the things that the Lewis Center really um, expanded um, after its creation in 2006 was the support of artists in many, many forms. So um, I mentioned the Hearst Choreographer in Residence Program, which is hugely supportive of a choreographer. In the um, theater program, there's the Berlin Playwright in Residence that provides commissioning work for, or commissioning funds for a playwright. And then our fellows programs, we have two um, programs, the Hotter Fellowship, which um, is a one-year fellowship that provides full-time salary and benefits, but is actually a complete sort of independent research fellowship. You do not have to come to Princeton campus. You do not have to teach. In fact, written into the gift agreement was that it is a year of studious leisure. So we almost can't ask them to do anything. Many of them are very generous with their time and still come to campus, but it's an extraordinary opportunity for an artist to have a year um, to work on a project. And in fact, when they propose, they do actually they propose with a project idea. This is what I want to do in this year. Um, and then our Princeton Arts Fellows, which three of them are pictured here, Mason Zaid, Tiana McLeod, and Michael, Do and Michael Love, um, are, they come to us for two years and they do teach a class each semester. So it's a kind of, um, they get to teach, but they also have a huge amount of time for their own work and they get a lot of research support um, through being fellows. So I, I feel like that's one of the things that's, to me, most exciting about the Lewis Center is its support of working artists alongside 
uh, student artists. And the fellows often have programs that are open, works in progress, developmental showings that are open to the public. Um, I think we- uh, Marion, I think we missed the visual arts. <laughs> I feel like we missed, uh, I went through visual arts. I know, I was just gonna yeah. say. So a program in visual arts. <laughs> so housed at 185 Nassau Street, it's run by a photographer, Jeff Whetstone. Um, but visual arts houses a huge number of kind of media. So there's graphic design, painting, um, drawing, filmmaking, um, design, animation, um, uh, sculpture, printmaking. So we have faculty from all of those areas and um, visual arts uh, has about 50 courses a year in all of these areas and students um, in their sophomore year apply to um, get into the program. And then in their junior year, they have a kind of shared studio space and do some, um, there'll, there'll be a junior show, uh, I think opening next week. And then in their senior year, they actually get a, a sort of more individual or two person studio. And then they do independent work in the spring where they get to do an exhibit as their sort of senior work, which is advised by a faculty member and is really a huge opportunity for a young artist um, in one of our studios. Um, so program and visual arts also vital to our community. So then the public events, um, I wanted to just share, um, again, as I mentioned, you know, probably 75% of our events are driven by student work, um, what they've proposed for their senior work, what, you know, what their classes are doing and things like that. But then we also do have a certain number of, of kind of presentations of, of working artists in the field. So this past March, we had this extraordinary project called Felon by Reginald Blaine Betts, which is a one-man show, but Wade is also a poet. Um, and we did a huge amount of programming kind of around his performances. So it was a theater project, but also there was an exhibit and a number of kind of public programs around it. Um, we also have, um, and then again, the reading series I mentioned, and in the fall, there will be a, a poetry festival at the Berlin that, uh, I think it's a one day event this year, but which brings um, at least six poets to a full day of, of readings and conversation. Um, but then I wanted to show, I'm gonna switch over here for a second. And then I wanted to show you our calendar. So on our website, and I'll drop this link in the chat as well in a minute, but on the calendar, you'll see um, all of our um, programming. And you don't have to, don't worry about reading it. It's more just to show you the format. Um, this is our arts calendar. And this calendar actually hosts all of the Lewis Center events. And it also invites contributions from um, departments across campus. So if they're going to be, um, if any of our other um, colleagues are doing artistic, you know, focused events, they can also post them here. So you'll learn a lot about um, what your opportunities are. And if you click on any of these, they'll share um, or they'll say whether or not it is open to the public. So the vast majority of those are, but it is true that every once in a while, there's some that are geared um, specifically towards students. And we try to make that very clear um, in our in our listing. So that's, it was a lot. There was a lot of, those were a lot of words about us, but that's, um, that's a little bit of, of who we are. Again, thank you to um, um, Angel and Marion. Very much appreciate you being here. Um, and yeah, I look forward to continuing to build this relationship. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for, having, you for us. having us. Okay, Bye. awesome. Bye.